Okay, a couple of things here. I bet you did, though. The uh, Rhea Ripley injury is confirmed. Uh, she is hurt, and she may need to vacate the WWE women's title. And I would presume in the next couple of hours we're going to uh, get some sort of official announcement from WWE. But uh, what I've been told is that it is a legitimate injury. It did happen during the backstage brawl with Liv Morgan. It was not the chair that Liv threw at her head, but it probably was, you know, they were throwing each other into walls and et cetera. And I think one of the bumps that she took into the wall is is what did it. It looked like she spiked her shoulder yes. into the wall a little bit, in which case I would think maybe some sort of shoulder separation. I think it's joint, very possible like that. that that is it. But here's the deal. Like, in order to vacate the title, I mean, it's got to be a pretty serious injury. And if you remember they when they did that, uh, like Finn Balor, you know, he got uh, the running power bomb into the the barricade, and uh, and like he destroyed everything. I mean, torn labrums. I mean, it was just a, a hideous injury. And you know, said it a thousand times. Like sometimes things happen. Sometimes stupid things happen of something that should never. It just accidents happen. So uh, we will know more. I'm sure by uh, by Raw tonight, but uh, what a terrible story, man. I mean, she had that title forever. You know, we were doing previews for WrestleMania, and it was like, is she going to win? Is Becky going to win? And I predicted, I think Rhea's going to win because, you know, whatever their idea was a year ago, Rhea is the hottest women star in the company. She's one of the hottest stars. I mean, forget men or women. She's one of the hottest stars in the entire company. Now is not the time to take the title off of her. And a week later, backstage fluke. Looks like she may have to vacate the title. So, all the best to her. We also have the uh, announcement. Rossi Ogawa has revealed his new promotion. He announced the formation of Dream Star Fighting Marigold. Or Marigold for short. Their first show, which I swear to God this was called, Marigold Fields Forever, is going to be taking place May 20th, Cork and Hall. will stream on Wrestle Universe, both Japanese and English commentary. Main event, Julia and Sari are both in there. It'll be a tag team match. We don't know their partners yet. And they have seven roster members at this point. Julia, Utami, Hayashi Shida, Mirai, Nane Takahashi, Mai Sakurai, and Yuzuki who is now Victoria Yuzuki and uh, Nao Ishikawa. And also at the end of the uh, press conference, uh, Netsumi, Sumikawa, Miku Aona, Misa Matsui, Chiaki, Chika Goto, Koki, all of uh, Actress Girl Z, another uh, uh, Joshi promotion in Japan, all also announced will be part of the roster. So uh, they do have a bunch of uh, women. And uh, obviously, this is the fallout of Ogawa being fired from stardom. And now we have uh, two uh, stardom-esque groups. I mean, there are a number in Japan, but this is this is the uh, founder of stardom's new group. And then there's also stardom. And how this all falls out, obviously, AW is going to be working with stardom. Uh, there has been talk about WWE working with Rossi Ogawa. What that means, I don't know, but uh, maybe some WWE NXT women uh, going over there for some tours. You, Tom, just made your stardom commentary debut, so you will be remaining with stardom is my presumption. Is that correct? It seems that way. Yeah, you weren't at this press conference. I don't, I don't know if Rossi Ogawa has got a really nice hat he could offer me. Yeah, he probably took but... one look at your head and was like, nah. He, he if he looks him. now, he's going to be like, hey, I need to give this guy a hat regardless. Mm. But, hey, I'll tell you one thing, Brian, as a purveyor and connoisseur of the Japanese Joshi wrestling scene, I can tell you there's no lack of talented females out there that can go in the ring. So I don't necessarily – I don't look at this as like a bad thing for the business – of female wrestling in Japan because I think stardom was overstacked with talent to a certain extent. However, it is it is interesting that like Wrestle Universe essentially owns Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling 
and now they're also airing what could be you know a bigger group than even them yeah we had uh, a couple of shows this weekend with women's matches you know it's one thing when some rando on the internet says that i don't like any women's matches or aw women's matches or whatever but when I hear from a subscriber, I'm like, do you not listen to anything when you make these these comments? We had we had the uh, the Azumi match with Tony Storm, which I thought was a great match on the uh, it was on the Collision show. That was the best AEW women's match I've seen in a long time. And then on that uh, that New Japan show, uh, we had another great Azumi match, but we're out of time, so we'll talk about it after the break. And Tom's match and everything that went down this weekend. So back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So we had Tony Storm versus Izumi on Saturday. And we had Stephanie Bacure, Bacare, no one can ever get this name right, against Izumi on... Vacker? Uh, Vacker, I mean, anyway, Steph and Izumi, as Granny would say, Steffi and Izumi on, uh, on Friday night. And uh, both these matches were great. And the thing with uh, with Azumi, it's one thing when you when you put like this match on a on a New Japan show, New Japan fans, that's one thing, or a Stardom show, whatever. But she, this was her debut on Collision on Saturday night. Okay, she debuted on Collision. She'd never been on Dynamite or Collision before, and or Rampage. And she comes out, and she's facing Timeless Tony Storm, okay? Now, I know a lot of you love the Timeless Tony Storm gimmick, okay? But the issue with the gimmick that we've discussed many times is that she is supposed to be a heel, but she is so wildly entertaining at her gimmick that it just murders all these other baby faces. Like, these baby faces go out there. It killed Deanna Parazzo. I mean, nobody cared about Deanna. And it's happened many times where you do a match and nobody cares about the baby face because they love Tony. So she's in there, Tony Storm, versus a woman that nobody there has ever seen. Uh, I said it was 1,800 fans. Uh, that was a couple days earlier. They actually did about 2,400 or something like that. But still, you know, people y- y- mad at me for 1,800. 2,400 is really not that much better, everybody. I mean, 2,400 for a collision in Battle of the Belts. Why are you mad at me? But anyway, there's 2,400 people there. Azumi in her AW in-ring debut against Tony Storm, who everybody loves. And man, they loved Azumi. She got over so big to this crowd, facing Tony Storm in Kentucky. So I saw that and I was like, man, she is special. And I'd seen her in stardom. We've reviewed stardom shows with Azumi. But my God... I mean, I was so impressed with... I mean, the match was great. It was as close to a stardom match as you're going to get with Tony doing that gimmick. You know, she had a couple of things, and she does a running hip attack, and they film it in black and white. Like, somehow that's okay, but the Bray White black... Anyway. So anyway, I uh, thought it was great, and uh, I also thought the the uh, Stephanie Vakir... V- Golly, match was great on, uh, on the uh, New Japan show. So anyway... Azumi stock going straight up. That's what I think. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.